Good day, everyone, and welcome to episode 12 of the HJC Podcast. Today is a special episode. It's the HJC Podcast Festivus episode, powered by HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. I've got my aluminum pull-up, and we're ready to go here. I'm Ryan, your Saturday writer. Joining me today is the man who came up with this idea, Tuesday's writer, Ben. How's it going, Ben? Happy Festivus, Ryan. Happy Festivus. TC, Friday's writer. Uh, it's It's been a pretty festival, Festivus. <laughs> and the man who has no clue what we're doing today, friend of the show, Beepo. How's it going, man? Good. I only somewhat know what we're doing. <laughs> it should be a good episode. As I said, it's the HJC Festivus episode. Uh, we'll also do our usual features like Around the League, Fake or Authentic. We'll dip into the HJC mailbag. And we will also have Festivus Will Not End Without the Feats of Strength. There will be the Feats of Strength here on this episode, otherwise known as Throwback Throwdown. So let's get right into it. We'll start with the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people, and you're all going to hear about it. This is the section of the show. We're all going to run down our problems with the Jersey world. And uh, TC, maybe you got some problems you want to run down? Airing of grievances. Uh, my biggest problem this year was the decision to relegate uh, you know, non-on-ice edition jerseys to Fanatics. The whole... F- Switch to Adidas, I was skeptical of, but the move to Fanatics is just a slap in the face to fans. You're paying outrageous sums of money for shoddy product. They use inferior materials. For $130, you can get a blank version of your team's jersey. For $170, you can get a player's name, or for another $30 on top of that, you can get it customized, or... For $20 on top of that, an official Adidas employee will come to your house and personally defecate on your chest, (laughs) simulating the experience of wearing a Fanatics jersey. Yeah, Fanatics, you really screwed us this year. What the hell? You would think that to those orphans in Thailand, they could afford to drop the prices. And you know why they use the children? It's because their little hands are better at getting that fine stitching. <laughs> ben, you got you got any grievances you want to let out? I have several grievances I'd like to air. I have 13 of them, in fact. <laughs> uh, Nike Olympic jerseys, just uh, I, can't, I cannot stand them. Uh, like I said in previous podcasts, they're glorified t-shirts. Um, every country got the same design. Fortunately, Sweden was smart enough to uh, show the middle finger, but the other 12, uh, is, is just really no hope for them. What else you got? Go ahead. Run through your list. Give us some. All, all of them? Not all of them. Give us, give us some highlights. It's your, it's your time. Air your grievances. There's no other time during the year where you have this opportunity. Um, I think you need a collar. Uh, I think, I think overall Adidas was a downgrade from Reebok just because of the collar. We got uh, ten teams uh, with total redesigns. Half were good, half were bad. But for the rest that didn't change, they all just took massive downgrades because of. I, I mean, what's it supposed to be a horse collar? I, I just don't understand why it has to be so uh, large, and especially how they treated on some of them, cutting it off halfway. Uh, there's really no way to do more than one collar. It's distracting, Adidas. Fix it. If if I can just piggyback off of Ben, a, a grievance that I did have, and Ben, this predates your time on staff, but I do have, and I may have to revive it, a PowerPoint presentation on why Adidas went with the Pentagon. It has <laughs> a lot to do with Pentagon being close to a pentagram, a.k.a. satanic symbol, and Gary Bettman being the Antichrist. TC's opinions do not reflect those of HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. Ben, you got anything else that you want to throw out there? It is Festivus. The agreements aired directly at Adidas, but, man, Ottawa, well, I don't understand. It, they have the perfect brand identity with that barber pole striping and the old logo. 
for some reason, they don't take it. They keep what they have, except they make it worse than the switch to Adidas. Um, although, I think even worse than them was New Jersey. It took something good, made a couple changes to it, and everyone just made it completely terrible. Yeah, Ottawa could be a mainstay every year at the Festivus table during the airing of grievances. Ottawa would be a mainstay. I don't have high hopes for their full rebrand that's rumored to be coming out next year. All right, Beepo, this is your chance. What kind of grievances do you want to air? Well, I was originally going to go with the callers, but Ben got that. So I'm going to go with something that actually wasn't the case with too many teams, but the teams that it happens with, it's awful. The Pentagon, actually, since we were talking about it, on New York and Buffalo, especially, I can think of, when... There is absolutely no other color around it. Why in the... Why in... Uh, okay, I, I think I need to censor myself a little bit, but <laughs> why in the hell do you have a bright color popping out right there for no reason unless, like TC said, you're Gary Bettman supporting the Antichrist, or being the Antichrist, I should say. It just makes no sense. It stands out for no good reason. And I know New York had it, in the Reebok Edge, but it didn't stand out so much. It was actually half covered by the collar. Now it just stands out like a sore thumb or a sore tail of Gary Bettman. <laughs> you got anything else, or is, is that your major grievance of the year? Uh, if I had a little bit more time to think, I might be able to come up with something, but Ben took what I had before, so All that's right. what I got right I got a few things. Let, let me know if you come up with anything else, Beepo, but my major grievance of the year is the fact that they continue, the NHL continues to put their really quality event logos on the shoulders of jerseys, winter classic jerseys, stadium series, all that kind of stuff. It ends up on the shoulder and it ends up being an afterthought. When the winter classic first started, those patches used to be on the front of the jersey and it would be featured because it was a featured event. But now they're moving it to the shoulders. It's a secondary thought. And just as I'm thinking about it, Adding on to that, the fact that you can't buy those event jerseys with the logos attached, you got to add on an extra 20 or 30 bucks just to buy the patch. And then you got to find a place that's going to put it on and not charge you extra, which is hard to find. So, of course, they're just going to ask you to bend over and take more money from your wallet. Another grievance that I have, and this goes out to the concept artists, and this one has to stop the edification and now the, uh, the Adidasine of retro concepts. We know what the Anaheim Mighty Ducks used to look like. We know what the Calgary Flames used to look like. All of those teams, jerseys from the 80s, 90s, 70s, whatever. We know what they used to look like. We don't need to see what they would look like on the Adidas template. We can all do that on our own computers. We can all do that in our imaginations. So uh, in 2018, let's try and make those concepts stop. And my third grievance, again, to the... My, my New Year's resolution is to give all of those zeros. Yes, you should get a zero. Go ahead, send it in, but you're getting a zero from the writers, or at least two writers so far. We'll see who else grabs a pitchfork and a torch and, and joins the cause. I'll give you a zero and I don't even use numbers. <laughs> see that? He's even amending show you how bad you are. So don't do it. And the next thing is for the concept artists that send in a full set or a complete uh, series of jerseys, all at, all at once, all 15 of them, and they're supposed to be sequential, and each and every one of them has the same air over and over and over again. Send in a few, get some feedback. Send in a few again, and improve on the feedback that you were given. And then eventually, because you're doing these long series, your concepts will improve because you've taken the feedback that not only the writers have given you, but that the commenters have given you, your fellow readers. And those are my grievances for 2017. Anybody else want to tack right, on to that? I got another one now. What do you got? All right. So the Adidas Authentics this year, you expect to get something kind of like the Reebok Authentic, authentic, stitched numbers and letters, and uh, like almost not exactly the materials that are used on ice because that's what you get from a gamer. But something at least similar, something that's not reflecting of a sweatshirt like the Fanatic. If you want a sweatshirt, get the Fanatic. I don't know why you'd want that, but if you want it, get the Fanatic. But my main grievance is the numbers. 
why are they the same numbers as the replicas from last year if you get it from the official NHL shop or any of the official retailers? If you get it from a third, like some websites like what was it, Hockey, I believe I got mine from, um, then you can actually get stitched numbers. But you, it's also a custom setting that costs more. On the authentic, why are your numbers replica quality? That's what I'm wondering. Agreed. That's my view. Absolutely agreed. The, those thin numbers on the Adidas authentic jerseys feel terrible. And just for anyone wondering, the Adidas authentics are pretty much Indo Edge jerseys. Uh, a few years ago, Reebok moved their authentic jersey production to Indonesia, and the quality was a significant downgrade, so they moved it back to Canada. Uh, well, Adidas owns Reebok, so you don't, they're probably using the same plant. And the Adidas Authentics are made in Indonesia. So pretty much it's their Indo-Edge jerseys in the Adidas cut. That's my opinion. Those are our grievances for 2017. Happy Festivus, everyone. Let's move on to Around the League. The HJC Podcast, every Saturday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern on HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. It's now time to go around the league. This is the part of the show that everyone loves, where you get to hear about our favorite teams and how they did during the entire week. And Ben, why don't you uh, start us off, because I'm not ready yet with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Start us off. Tell us how it went in hockey town. Well, speak for yourself when you say everyone enjoys this segment. <laughs> uh, I, I don't understand what's going on in Detroit right now. Uh, I think Jimmy Howard's kind of taken over the role of goaltending, but uh, aging and injured, and there's only so much you can expect from him at this point. Uh, the defense is still lifeless, um, although Trevor Daly can shoot the puck. I did not know that. I was good enough for two game winners uh, this past two weeks, but uh, as they're keeping the puck out of the other net, they still haven't figured that part out yet. Uh, the offense still gives me hope. Uh, Athens, U, Larkin, and Mantha players really excited to see uh, their futures so uh, I think uh, we're looking forward to most right now is the draft lottery uh, other than that uh, hockey's exciting so win or lose it's still hockey yay hockey <laughs> go hockey all right uh, TC give us a Rangers update uh, the Rangers have been doing pretty well. They lost a tough one last night in a shootout to the Devils who are currently in the Metropolitan, uh, tied with the Caps, but they're sitting in first. Uh, they're just outside the top three for the Met. They're still sitting comfortably in front of the Islanders and Pittsburgh, which is great for Rangers fans. And they're pretty, pretty solid position to still be in contention for a wild card, but we'll see how the second half of the season goes. And we have a cupcake game against a certain team up north tomorrow. Yeah, okay, fantastic. That's great. <laughs> Beepo, let us know what's going on with the Penguins. Well, the Penguins are still struggling. Uh, I missed last week's podcast. So since the week before that, they have gone 2-4-0. and And they pulled out a nice shootout win yesterday. Well, yeah, a couple days ago, yesterday, whatever, against Columbus, which... Unfortunate to give them a point, but glad not to give them both points and make up a little bit. So they're, I believe they're sitting barely outside of a playoff spot right now in the tight Metro. So if the pet, if they manage to bring it up for the next half of the season, I could easily see them taking even second in the Metro if they manage to do that well. And there are some trade talks brewing now. Rutherford's already made a few, uh, ma- mainly minor trades, but Jamie Alexiak, after one game, seems to be doing pretty nice. So hopefully there's a bigger trade to shake things up a little bit, hopefully get some momentum going for the Penguins. And honestly, if they do happen to miss the playoffs, I don't think it'll be the worst thing from a fan or managerial standpoint because it might give them the rest they need to come back swinging next year, maybe go for a three and four rather than a three seed. Knowing Pittsburgh's luck, they'd probably somehow win the draft lottery, which would just be disgusting. Only only second. That would be awesome. No, no, it wouldn't be awesome. The only thing worse would be the Oilers winning the draft lottery again. If they're not going to make the playoffs, I'll take a draft lottery. Yeah, who wouldn't? (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, as far as Leafs go, the Maple Leafs, Toronto Maple Leafs, the center of the hockey universe, as much as you all love to hear that, Toronto is the center of the hockey universe. Uh, since we last talked, they had a Friday game against the Red Wings, which they lost 3-1. to one, And they've actually been struggling. They've uh, lost four of their last five as they head into Madison Square Garden tonight to play the Rangers. But uh, they had the next century game on Wednesday, the 2 p.m. start at home against Carolina Hurricanes. And they just crushed them 8-1. to one. But then they couldn't bring the same effort the next night against the Columbus Blue Jackets and lost 4-2. And to top all that, Austin Matthews has been dealing with concussion symptoms. He may be coming back tonight against the Rangers, but nobody knows. And, of course, you can't expect uh, any player to be 100% or be themselves their first game back. So despite uh, their recent record and their losing ways, they still have a little bit of a buffer ahead of the Bruins and the Canadians in the division. They're likely not going to catch Tampa Bay, but they are strongly in a playoff spot. And this is all with Matthews out of the lineup. Nylander and Marner not producing. Of course, Marner has been producing the last couple games. So uh, despite their losing the last four or five, uh, still feel pretty good about the Leafs. And that was around the league. We're now going to go to fake or authentic. Faker Authentic is a regular staple on the HJC podcast, and this is where I give out a statement, and the reader, sorry, the writers, the fellow guests on the show, will say whether the statement is fake or authentic. I've got four statements prepared, and we're going to get started right now. Now, this one is not really Jersey related, but it's still a great debate question. Fake or authentic? The Festivus episode in Seinfeld ranks in the top five. Ben. Absolutely authentic. It's my number two. And your number one? Soup Nazi. <laughs> TC Seinfeld fan? Uh, absolutely. I actually just got finished a week or two ago rewatching the entire series. Yeah, I got that box set, the entire series, as a Christmas gift last year. And I'm only two thirds of the way through it. Still working on it. But TC, fake or authentic? Festivus episode ranks in the top five all time. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with Ben and say authentic. I think it's one of those episodes that's truly iconic and sticks out in your mind when you're thinking of uh, Seinfeld episodes. It's up there with the Space Pen, uh, Soup Nazi, of course, uh, the Junior Mint episode. It's just one of those ones that when you think Seinfeld, it jumps. Yeah, and Beepo, uh, did you watch, are you old enough to watch Seinfeld? (laughs) I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> Do you know what Seinfeld was? Didn't that guy play in the B-movie and say you like jazz? The B-movie. Great. That's where you know Jerry <laughs> Seinfeld from. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know what Seinfeld is. I just never really got into the show. or For the most part, I never got into too much TV in general. Never really been a TV person. I don't know why. Full disclosure to everyone listening, have you seen the Festivus episode? I, some reason I didn't think to talk to me. No, I have not. <laughs> no, he hasn't. All right. Did you, you want to throw an answer out there just for fun? Fake or authentic? Festivus episode. Top five Seinfeld episodes of all time. I'll jump on the bandwagon and just say sure because why not? Great answer. I mean, if we're talking about it now, and if it seems like such a popular thing as it is, it's got to be iconic, right? Very good answer. something I got to watch after the podcast. You certainly do. Go watch it. Everyone should go watch the Festivus episode of Seinfeld. I'm going to say this one's authentic, too. It, it ranks in the top five. I don't know exactly where in the, in my top five, but I'd have to say it's definitely in my top five. My number one favorite episode is The Marine Biologist and the monologue that Jason Alexander gives at the end, and he pulls out the golf ball that Kramer had been hitting into the ocean. That's my number one episode, but Festivus definitely ranks in the top five. The next statement, teams should be mandated by the NHL on how many or how few times they wear a third jersey. Fake or authentic, Ben? I'll say fake. Uh, I just don't see why the NHL needs to get involved in an issue like this. Um, I think maybe the only thing they should be involved in is what color they should be able to wear. Um, I know right now it's dark at home, white on the road. Maybe they do something where uh, 
light on the road, dark at home, doesn't have to be white. Um, I think uh, the big thing that they need to enforce is consistency uh, just to make it easy on the refs. I know there was a preseason game a few years ago where both teams were wearing white. Uh, so other than that, I don't see a problem. And, of course, it's Dallas and Florida who did that. Just Well, not necessarily Dallas, but Florida, just a joke of a team. Of course that happened with Florida. TC, fake or authentic on this one? Oh, did we lose TC on this one? Hello? Yeah, there you are. TC, fake or authentic? Yeah. I don't think that we should be forcing teams to, like, choose when or how many times they have to wear a third. There are teams where it doesn't really make sense to have a third, like Detroit. Detroit has no need for a third. They have such a classic uniform. The Devils are up there, too, the closest they get. And I kind of like the fact that they only wear the uh, green throwbacks once a year. I think it's just nitpicking for bureaucracy's sake in the league. And that's where this uh, statement's generated from because rumors uh, are about that uh, the Maple Leafs may use the St. Pat's jersey as their alternate jersey next year, and then it came up, well, wouldn't they have to wear it 5 to 12 times? And apparently they would only want to wear it once on around St. Pat's Day, but whatever. Beepo, fake or authentic, teams should be mandated on how many or how few times they can wear a third jersey. I think I'm going to throw it back a few months ago here, and I'm going to sit on the fence because about leaning more towards fake because I would love to see as much of a variety as possible of jerseys, as long as they're good jerseys, of course. I mean, let's just assume they're both good jerseys. I want to see as much of a variety as possible. I, I wouldn't even mind seeing like a 50-50 split for home games sometimes. But I think the, the reason that I'm towards authentic is that I'm sure the NHL doesn't want that to happen. I'm sure the NHL would much rather a jersey that is home be more designated for home. As much as I would love to see it happen more often that the alternates use more. Or even like the NBA's new system of the home team picks the color as long as they both clash. As long as they can end up clashing. That's the way that so, the IIHF does it too. I'm going to lean towards fake, but with a sprinkle of authentic in there. So maybe less on the fence than I thought. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go fake on this one. Uh, teams should be free to wear their alternate jerseys as much as they want. They're alternate jerseys. They're um, mandating, you know, color jerseys at home. That's fine. And white jerseys on the road. But, yeah, there's no need to tell teams how many times they should wear their or how few times they should wear their alternate jerseys. Statement number three, we saw the next century game from the Toronto Maple Leafs this past week. So Toronto should adopt the arena's jerseys as a full-time third next year. Fake or authentic, Ben? I'll have to say fake. I think Toronto's one of those teams that can just have a home and road, and that's it. Be done. It's a really classic. Just stick with what works. TC, fake or authentic? I'm going to go with authentic. I think it's a good-looking jersey. Um, I think they actually enjoy celebrating their heritage, and I think it's a great way to celebrate you know, the history of hockey in Toronto. So I think if they want to make it a full-time third, they should be free to do so. Beepo, fake or authentic? This jersey should be a third, full-time third next year. I'm going to go with authentic too. And I somewhat disagree with Ben that I think Toronto is a team that could use an alternate. They've done it before. They had the, uh, I don't remember the exact years, but I know one of them was the 67 throwback and the other one was the, white throwback with the maple leaf that more closely resembled their current logo. They both had those a third, and they worked just fine on their set, and that's because they both called back to history. This jersey also calls back to history, and I think it would fit just fine on the set. The only thing that I would change, change the arena's text to maple leaf. That way it would fit more with the maple leaf's current brand instead of honoring a team that doesn't exist. It works for a game, but I think that it would be a lot better for the maple leaf to go more maple leaf with it. I don't know if it said if it said Maple Leafs on the front of that jersey, that would that would go pretty far. That would almost be going around the sides too. <laughs> That'd be fairly interesting. I would say uh, if they were going to use it to just remove the text altogether and just go with the T, I think that'd be okay. But I'm actually going to go with fake on this statement. Uh, I agree with Ben. The Leafs should, uh, much like the Red Wings, just stick with a home and away jersey. And, you know, special event jerseys are fantastic. So that's where this jersey should stay as far as I'm concerned. 
And our last statement in the Faker Authentic segment, teams should have no more than three full-time jerseys in a set. That means home, road, and alternate. Faker Authentic, Ben. I'm going to say authentic. As a fan of college hockey, there's lots of teams with uh, four jerseys in their sets, and it's absolutely ridiculous because uh, college hockey doesn't – they don't have a dark and white rule. They have a dark and light rule. And so what most teams have is one dark jersey and three light jerseys. Um, in college, you usually play like a Friday and a Saturday game. So it, it would take you two weeks to get through all your uh, home jerseys. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, if you go into the NHL, they play uh, they, they play more spaced out. They don't usually don't play back-to-backs. So I, it, it's just too much. TC, fake or authentic on this one? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say fake, you know, uh, I'm a big fan and, you know, I think that's what we're all about here is design and anything that allows them to showcase more designs, uh, I'm going to be in favor of, I think it would be cool to have, uh, both an alternate and away so that if they're on the road, say they're playing the same team, uh, three times in a season, you know, they can switch it up against that team instead of having the same away jersey every time. And Beepo, fake or authentic on this one? Team should have no more than three full-time jerseys. I'm also going to say fake. As as I mentioned last topic, uh, I am a big fan of what the NBA is doing this year, and that involves more than three jerseys. I think it would be a great opportunity for some teams to get some variety. And even a team like, for example, St. Louis, who has four colors in this team, have a, blue, have a light blue jersey, a navy blue jersey, a yellow one, and a white one. Maybe. Just for example, I'm not sure that would actually work. But just get a variety of colors in your uh, in your set, or, as TC mentioned, a, a home alternate and a, and a road alternate. Kind of like the Caps had with their winter classic jersey turned alternate, and then switched over to a red one. Of course, they didn't have that in the same season, but it, it could have worked just as well for them if they could have it in the same season. Well, the so mighty- something like that, I think it would... I think it would open up a great opportunity for that. The Mighty Ducks did have that in the 90s. They had a home and road alternate. Um, yeah, but it. those were awful-looking jerseys. They were awful, but, I mean, they still had they still had it. So they had four supposedly full-time jerseys. For, uh, for me on this one, I'm going to have to go with fake, but I would like to see it conditionally. I'd like to see a home and road. I'd like to see the alternate that you see, whatever it is, 8 to 12 times a year. And then I'd like to see one sort of specialty jersey that's worn – two to three times a year, I would say. Um, for instance, the Leafs don't have Friday games all that often. They may have two in a year. So when they play on Fridays, you know you're going to get to see whatever it is. Let's say the arena's jersey. And you only see it twice a year. So it makes that game just a little bit more special just because it's it's a specialty jersey. So that if, if I, yeah, I'm going to have to go with fake on this one because I would like to see teams with four jerseys. Not five, don't need six. Don't need a whole roster of, of different jerseys that they can wear. But yeah, I'd say four jerseys. So that was fake or authentic. Always enjoy that segment. Uh, coming up next will be the HJC mailbag. Voting is your American right and responsibility. Wait, you're Canadian? Voting is your Canadian right and responsibility. Either way, vote for the concept of the week here at HJC. Every week, there's a new vote on the right-hand side of the page in a black box. Just click the concept you wish to vote for, and boom, you're all done. Results posted every Saturday at 4.30 with Ryan's weekly recap here at HJC. Mailbag. 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 It is the HJC mailbag. Thanks to everyone who sent in questions this week. If you want to send in questions and haven't... Uh, have them answered on the blog or have them answered on the podcast. You can leave your questions on the blog, hockeyjerseyconcepts.com. There's a form on the side of the page. Make sure to leave your name with the question so that we can credit you with said question during said podcast. Uh, This question, it's not even a freaking question, and I know who sent it. He didn't leave his name. Uh, It just says, I have a puck collection. And if you listen to the podcast... (laughs) (laughs) And if you listened to the podcast last week, you will know that Jets96 has a puck collection. 
and that if you find the secret link to get the special video feed of the podcast, you will see his puck collection every time he joins the podcast. That's just a joke. Don't go looking for a secret link. There's no such thing. All right, we had one question come in from Alan, and he wants to know, what's your favorite hockey video game not made by EA Sports? Ben, do you have a favorite hockey video game not by EA Sports? I actually don't. I've never played any uh, that haven't been made by EA. Okay, TC, you? Oh, hold on. I have to look it up and see. Okay, yeah, NHL Hits 2003. (laughs) And what system was that on, do you know? Uh, That was on the original Xbox, although an honorable mention does go to Backyard Hockey. That was one of the first video games I ever owned. Uh, Pablo Sanchez, the secret weapon that wasn't a secret weapon. It was just spectacular game with lots of silliness. But for me, Hits is the best of the non-EA games because it's. I just loved all of the Midway games. Like MLB Slugfest, same series, but for baseball, if you were running towards the base, you could punch a guy in the face and make him drop the ball before he tagged you out. And that's what baseball should be. And any makes it more hockey. So the fact that they had stuff like that in hits was only better. All, uh, yeah, all, all uh, base runners in baseball should be wearing UFC gloves so they can just knock a mofo out. Beepo, you got a, you got a favorite non EA sports hockey game? Well, back uh, back in the uh, late two thousands, the uh, EA or not the EA, the two uh, K games were kind of competing with EA. I remember those ones a bit, but I'm going to go with TC's runner-up as my number one, backyard hockey. I never really played hits or anything, and that's, aside from 2K, the only game that I can actually think of that's a non-EA that I've played, and it just kind of holds a special place in my heart as kind of being, I think, the first hockey video game, if not one of the first video games in general that I've played, and even maybe a year or two ago, I tried to get a uh, GB uh, Game Boy uh, emulator on my phone, and that was one of the games that I downloaded. Along with Pokemon, that's my that's my childhood right there. <laughs> All right, I, I seem to be significantly older than the guests that are on this podcast, so um, I can name three of them that I really enjoyed. I'll go back all the way to the original Nintendo system and Blades of Steel, which was just the first hockey game, and I could play that for hours on end. Little six-year-old Ryan with his Nintendo controller playing Blades of Steel forever. The competition to Blades of Steel was ice hockey, I think it was called. Uh, another generic oh, hockey game. creative on that one. <laughs> ice hockey. Now, the thing I remember about ice hockey is that you could choose your referee style. So you could make them blind, average, or really strict. But also, you could change his body type, which I guess influenced his refereeing decisions. So you could make him skinny, medium, or fat. So you could have a fat, dumb guy out there calling the game, and no one would get any penalties. And the third game that I remember, the Nintendo 64 Wayne Gretzky 3D Hockey. Now, the best thing about this game was that you could hit your own players. So if, you, you know, if you're you losing 10 to 1 and you want to decide to go rogue, you could just go around and start chopping down your own players. And uh, I guess it's a heel turn. You switch to the other team. But those are my three favorite non EA Sports Hockey Games. Good question, Alan. Thanks for sending that in. Now, uh, even though he's not on the podcast this week because he's off gallivanting in Disney World, Sean has left two questions, and we will only answer one of them because the first one is long-winded. Oh, actually, look at this. He left it today. He must be listening to this live. Uh, The Islanders wave jersey from the mid-90s, mid to late 90s. Could it have made a great alternate? Yes or no? And then he adds his comment. He thinks yes. So, Ben, do you think the Islanders wave jersey could have made a good uh, alternate? Uh, In a vacuum, no. It doesn't really come off as a a befitting hockey jersey for a hockey team. I I, I mean, I guess if we're comparing it to, like, the Black Brooklyn, then, yeah, I'd prefer that. Uh, But, TC, would that make a good alternate? I think it makes a fantastic alternate. I'm personally more partial to the fisherman than just the wave, but I still like the wave. I know Jets has one, and it looks beautiful. Um, 
And honestly, the Islanders have had the worst string of thirds of any team in the league, in my opinion. So I think that throwing it back to the wave would be an improvement. Beepo, your thoughts on the wave jersey as an alternate? In the 90s, yes, definitely could have been a great alternate. Probably better to stick it as an alternate than their actual home and away set. Today, no, it definitely could not work without a cleanup. But in a vacuum, I think it would work better for maybe a minor league team, AHL or ECHL. But with a cleanup, it could definitely work today. But in the 90s, it definitely would have been a great alternate. Even the fishermen, honestly. Yeah, I 100% agree with Beepo on this one. Uh, I don't think it would make a great alternate. That was the HJC Mailbag. Don't forget, if you want your question answered on the HJC podcast, go to HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. And leave your question on the forum on the right side of the page. And we'll possibly answer that. Uh, Sometimes if questions don't come in, or if good questions don't come in, we will answer old questions. So if you sent in a question last month or sometime previously, we may still get to your question. And now we will head to the feats of strength. Festivus does not end without the feats of strength. And of course, the feats of strength will also be known as Throwback Throwdown. You may be familiar with this segment on the HJC podcast. This is where we pit two classic jerseys against each other. We all give our positives and negatives on the jersey, and then we choose a winner. And so today's matchup, because Anaheim and Pittsburgh are going to play tonight, we have Anaheim's orange third, their recent orange third from the Reebok Edgera. Going up against Pittsburgh's Sunday Yellows from the 1980s. Ben, why don't you start us off? Your thoughts on Anaheim's orange third jersey? Uh, I think, first and foremost, I really appreciate going back to the classic Disney era logo. Um, I think what really brings this down, though, is the bronze. It really clashes with the orange. It's, it's, it's just absolutely not necessary. But uh, overall, I like it. TC, Orange Ducks jersey. Um, Sort of going to echo what Ben said. I love the return of the Wild Wing logo. That's the Ducks that I grew up with. Um, but, you know, Orange alternate is not a bad idea, but they need to really downplay that bronze because that is just a color combination that does not work. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say it's not the worst but I'm not the biggest fan of that alternate. Beepo, thoughts on the Anaheim orange alternate? As you guys know, I love color, so I love a bright orange jersey. That's a great look, and I'm going to also have to echo the gold uh, or the bronze. That just does not look good when compared to the orange, and the inconsistency of the arm and hem striping, too, is pretty annoying. If I I were the designer of this jersey, I would have taken the uh, hem pattern stuck it on the arm, made the bronze into silver, maybe. And that's just a quick fix for it, if you ask me. But overall, it's a start. It's a start for sure, and the bright color is a great look. I actually love this jersey. I love that it's orange. I love the retro logo. I love that they straightened out the stripes. The bronze doesn't bother me at all. I was actually considering it gold, but I'll go along with the bronze. Uh, It doesn't bother me whatsoever. Uh, It was. I think they went with block numbering. I'm pretty sure they went with block numbering on this. Uh, the only no, thing, it's their, uh, no, it's it's the same. It's they normal. want the Ducks font it's on this. Font. Either yeah. way, either way, still a solid jersey in, in my books. Uh, and I think they also went with Anaheim up on the collar too. They wrote Anaheim or or Ducks or something like that. So this jersey's on my wish list. Uh, the only thing that I'm not a fan of, it doesn't need the collar laces. That just seems like collar laces for the sake of collar laces. Uh, so I'm a thumbs up on this jersey. Going up against the Anaheim Orange jersey is Pittsburgh's Sunday Yellows from the 80s. Um, Go ahead, Ben. What are your thoughts on the Sunday Yellows? I really like this one, too. It's it's basically a yellow version of what they wear now. Um, I like it. It's a classic uh, hockey pattern. I like the off-color shoulder. I like how the uh, the yoke comes in over it. Uh, Striping pattern's good. Uh, Doesn't have that white on yellow issue. The only thing I don't like is the yellow triangle and the logo kind of blends into the background which is why I would prefer a black jersey of it. But overall, it's a, it's a solid look. TZ, yellow Penguins jersey. 
I think it's a gorgeous jersey. Um, and what really sells it for me is that while they didn't do this, it works both as it can work both as a home and an away alternate. Um, they just used it at home on Sundays, hence the Sunday golds. But it it just fits in well with the rest of the set that they had. And it's distinct enough that it's not exactly the same as the others, but it works. Beepo thought on your penguins. Sunday Golds from an era where you weren't even alive. Again, I love the bright color. Of course, that stands out to me. The the one grievance I actually have with this is the in, slight inconsistency between the hem and arm scraping. I have that for the current home jerseys, too, and the sock scraping even for all of them. I don't like that as much, but overall, it's a great yellow jersey. The yellow helmet actually looks really good, too, just like I like it with Nashville. And... It's something that I really want to see come back. Maybe not the exact same design. I would love it if they did, but I'd like to see something unique as well. But if they brought this back, I would be really happy with it. Yeah, it's not a bad jersey to bring back. And I love the yellow helmets with it. The yellow helmets really stuck out. And I think with this jersey, they even put the the numbers were in the yokes, weren't they? As opposed to typical. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Tip, instead of the typical spot where you'd find the TV numbers. So, yeah, this is a classic jersey. Love it. It's now time to pick our winners. Go ahead, Ben. Who do you have, Anaheim's orange jersey or Pittsburgh's yellow jersey? This is a tough one for me, but uh, I'm going to go with the better jersey with the colors, so Pittsburgh. Tisu, who's your winner? Pittsburgh. (laughs) And Bebo, which way are you going on this one? You even need to ask me. (laughs) <laughs> and hot. No, he, I'm kidding. Pittsburgh. He definitely. has the striping on his wall. <laughs> <laughs> and You're I guess. Wrong. And I guess I'm the only person who's going to go with Anaheim on this one. So Anaheim gets blown out of the water three to one on this edition of Throwback Throwdown, which has been renamed the Feats of Strength on this HJC Festivus podcast. Festivus does not end until the host is pinned down. <laughs> If anyone can travel through their computer and wants to test me, go right ahead. I'm ready. I've been lifting weights and doing cocaine all day. That's <laughs> If anyone's seen Saturday Night Live, Best of Will Ferrell, you understand that one. Uh, that pretty much does it. We got uh, nothing left here on the podcast. We've run through all our material. Um, the New Jersey Devils winner... The competition winner will be announced on today's post. So you've probably read that already. And we'll take about a week break through the holiday here uh, on the competitions. And then we will come back on December 29th with a concept of the year logo competition. Beepo, you think you can win three in a row? We'll see. (laughs) We'll see. He has a better chance than the pens. We also have uh, shirts and stickers, HJC stickers, HJC jersey casual shirts for sale. Head on over to HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. Click the shop link and you'll be able to find the links there to find to purchase your shirts and stickers. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode or if you just want to be notified when new episodes go up, be sure to subscribe on YouTube and you'll be notified whenever we put these episodes up. And give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. It helps us out, spreads the word about the podcast. And also, just help us spread the word about the podcast. Tell a friend. Let someone know that, hey, this is going on. Give it a listen. It's pretty cool. And we also love you guys to get involved in our conversations. We want to see your comments, both on YouTube and the blog. And, of course, check out Hockey Jersey Concepts, as you guys know by now. Concept posts every day at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Just like to thank everybody for listening. Thank TC, Ben, and Beepo for joining me. And we will talk to you all next week.